Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Hello and welcome back to the channel where you join me for something I've been looking forward to, something very exciting. Today I'm taking my newly reacquired Aston Martin V8 Vantage Roadster, the first ever Shmi mobile that I originally bought over a decade ago, to head into central London to go car spotting. Now back when I did previously own this car, I was frequently found driving around London, roof down if possible, to try and chase down some of the rarest and most special cars that I could find on the streets of the city and today that's exactly what we're going to be doing a blast from the past and I can't wait for this now you can see at the moment I have removed the number plates that it has been wearing from the previous owner the documentation has now been processed it's all gone through and it is officially re-registered as 87 TB the plate that I actually had on this car back at the time I'm going to be fitting those up in just a moment before we head on out to relive some of those memories car spotting with the first Schmimobile and driving on some of the roads where the Schmi 150 channel originally began. Let's get it ready then, let's head into London and go see what we can find. It's been quite the mission, and that's probably an understatement, to remove the build-up of the sticky pads and gunk from underneath the number plates, probably dating back from when I owned this car before. It's taken about an hour to tidy it up a bit. The front is looking good. Of course, we've still got a few holes in the bumper, which are where normally you would have the number plate plinth, but in this case, I will stick the plate straight onto the bumper. The back, however, has been a complete disaster to say the least. Still a little bit more left here, but this whole area was covered in sticky pads. Been working away at it for quite a while. It's not the easiest thing, but it's interesting to see how many different holes there are in the bumper for all of the different countries and regions and number plate plinths. We've got the hook in the middle for the towing eye. If you ever need to tow a Vantage from the back, you would need to remove the number plate first, but there's also a hook around the front as well. The bad news is that it sounds like it's just started pouring with rain outside, which is not what I wanted. However, something else you might not believe is that I've actually been daily driving the Taycan recently. I've not been talking about it all that much, but since installing an EV charger, here the SeaTech Charge Storm 2 that we've got mounted on the wall, it has transformed the usability of an electric car. I just plugged it in on 13% after a fairly long journey out with it, and it will be back up to 100%, well, in less than half a day or so, and that makes it so much more livable with and a lovely way to get from home to here at the Museum, listening to the rain outside. That's not good at all. Anyway, let's talk about the number plates for a second. The OG subscribers amongst you guys might even recognize something here on the new plates that I've got, 87TB, Car spotting is not a crime. A quote that I actually had on a few cars back at the time, like the R8 Spider and then the McLaren 12C. It was never actually on this car. In fact, I had the 87 TB plate first on my Audi S5 Cabriolet, then it was on the Vantage, which was the first Schmiemobile on the channel. And then after that, it went to the R8, the 12C, the 650S Spider, the 675LT Coupe, and then it pretty much went into retirement until it came out for the Schmini before it was taken off about four years ago, and now it comes back on this. But the quote is a fun nod because all of the others have different things. The Black Series, the Best or Nothing from Gottlieb Daimler on the Ford GT. We've got a quote from Henry Ford. If I had asked people what they wanted, they would have said faster horses. On the Senna, a quote from Ayrton Senna, I have no idols, I admire work, dedication and competence. So I thought it was a bit of a fun thing for me personally on the Vantage Roadster, which is still very much in need of a proper cleanup. In fact, it has not had a wash at all since I got it back, but it needs a thorough top to bottom run through, as well as going over some of the details and the restoration side of things. But for the moment, I suspect I will get these plates installed and then hang around for a little bit before that stops to go car spotting. It's pouring with rain outside at the moment, so that's not ideal for going to find cars, but let's first get this installed. And there is no strict science to it. In fact, when I used to own this car, I had the plates mounted something like this, sitting on that upper edge. If you have the plinth in place, they actually sit here, just slightly up over the front grille. So I think I'm gonna go for something in the middle. That will need some tape across the center. The other complication is that we have a few drill holes here and they don't measure the same from the middle. So I need to basically ignore those because that's completely wrong and try and work out how to do this. Um, like I said, no strict science. It's just a case of trial and error to end up something like this. Let's give it a go. I've got the plan. This is now taped up. Um, okay, 
I've got to use the original hole, not where it was actually drilled. That's what's made this doubly confusing because of the way that it was done at some point in the past. Boom, stuck. Nice, front plate on, let's go do the back. One benefit of all of these holes is that it makes it very easy to line up the rear one. Also the fact that it has this indentation to actually place it. So it's gonna go something like, let's get this right. I've been doing some measuring just before. Are we correct left to right? That's the hardest bit. This matters, if you get it a millimeter wrong, it will always look stupid going forwards. Although this does need to clean up, there is quite some scratching underneath it. So I think that's good. Yeah, we're on, done. Plate's ready to go. Only problem is the rain. And the other problem is I'm now sitting on a garage floor before getting in a car with a cream interior. That wasn't very smart, <laughs> but I'll sort that one out. I've got some time, clearly. <laughs> it has eventually stopped raining. That was pretty torrential, but unfortunately it is also now at the end of the day. So although this video will continue in just a moment for you guys, I'm actually going to head home with the car and go car spotting tomorrow. But that means a startup from the lovely sounding V8 that this thing has. The plates are looking oh so good. Let's come round though and get it started up. It is a very, very pretty thing and brings back all of the memories I've already done nearly 300 miles or so of driving with it. I've got the valet key, but that just goes in here. And something to learn as well about the SportShift gearbox in just a moment. Let's start it. When you started the car up, you need to keep your foot on the brake because after about five seconds, you get that click, which is effectively it doing a clutch learn. So you want to do that basically every time you start. Anyway, just over 31,000 miles. I'm going to take this home. But let's continue tomorrow and go see what we can find. I'm not gonna lie, this is a little bit strange to be heading down Edgware Road at the moment. And in fact, way back when I had just bought this car and put 8070B onto it for the first time, I actually got pulled over here because back then the systems weren't updated in quite the same way. So I had to show the paperwork that said it was legally registered as that rather than the standard registration. Now all of that is done online, obviously to be able to put these plates on. In front of us at Marble Arch though, is the very controversial mound that we'll see in a moment. And hopefully shortly thereafter, we'll start to see some nice cars around heading to all of the, I suppose, famous sites of central London, Park Lane, past the Dorchester, Hyde Park Corner, down through Knightsbridge. Yeah, that is quite weird actually. Having a look just down there, they built this temporary construction to kind of give you a view over the park. But in the meantime, oh, nice Miami blue came in. Yeah, in the meantime, the uh, mound isn't quite what it was pitched that it was going to be. As you can see, just here, it's rather random to put a hill in the centre of London. Oh well, it is what it is. On the left here, we have Bob Forstner and Brabus here in London. I have filmed many videos back in the days visiting Bob Forstner. Now they have lots of Brabus G-Wagons, but back then, I think there was a Zonda and a Koenigsegg in there for ages. Then we have Aston Martin Park Lane, which was, I suppose, in some ways, technically the dealership that actually looked after me at the time I had this, being my local dealership. And it's where I ordered the GT8. In fact, I ordered it from this dealership, although collected it from the factory in Gaydon. And is that the Vantage F1 edition? I think in the second part of the showroom here? Yes, it is. It is indeed. Um, although showroom spotting isn't quite the same, we will head past some of the nice showrooms before we go around. Oh, there we go. Aventador SVJ, the flip coloured one tucked in that car park. Might come and have a proper look at that later on as we come down Park Lane, which used to be a nice flowing road on the other side. And in fact, the video where I first talked to camera driving this car, the first time I ever made a video on the channel speaking to camera, I started in uh, Parliament Square by Big Ben and then carried on as I was going up Park Lane here, which is kind of cool. We've then got Mini Park Lane and BMW Park Lane, which is where the M3 competition came from. Not sure what's inside. New 4 Series convertible, probably some other things around and about. But it's when you go back into the side streets that you start to really see everything that's lurking, eyes peeled, you never know. As we come around the corner here at the Dorchester Hotel, have a quick glimpse, what do we have? 812 super fast. Oh, is that a Zonda undercover? I, I can't, I, I don't know. <laughs> there was something pretty insane under the cover there. We will have to go back around quite shortly and get a little look at what that actually was. I 
it just it had that brownie metallic car cover which i think is normally a pagati so um yeah we'll go check that one out but let's head down this way first and in towards knightsbridge just to go do one little lap around oh nice <laughs> familiar green on a mustang cruising by so we go around hyde park corner we'll go up to knightsbridge and go along up at the top here but the times that i used to cycle around here chasing cars back before well before the days of instagram or tiktok or any of the new social media platforms. Sometimes there are nice cars just at the lanes for there on the left, but not today. Come down this way, very much building site land at the moment, but the number of different cars I've filmed, like, oh, what's that? Brabus, the chimney G-Wagon. <laughs> the uh, Brabus style kit on the chimney. What I was gonna say, the number of times down here I have chased Koenigseggs, Pagani's, Bugatti's, and all sorts of very, very, very cool cars. Another Mustang, loads of Mustangs around now in the UK since they started delivering them here. We might actually be a bit early in the day for many of the cool things, he says, but we will go back around to the Dodge Step. And I have to apologize as well for constantly saying he says, it just seems to be one of those things that I'm stuck in at the moment. Let's see what we can find in Knightsbridge then. Ferrari, California. I think that one's actually been around there for quite some time. Now back here in days gone by was where you would always see Lambos parked up everywhere. All of the cars from the Middle East, just on every single corner, on every single possible parking space around the back of Harrods, which is just on our left. And then this is the whole, oh, there we go. <laughs> Chrome blue R8 Spider. <laughs> that stands out a bit. A bit being an understatement, quite a lot. And then up here around the back as well. You never know what might be lurking. You know, G-Wagons everywhere. G63s are like taxis around here. There are so many of them. It wouldn't be a drive in London without going through the tunnel, popping the window down a little bit, because this car, stock exhaust, actually sounds awesome. Yeah, good times. Shame about the speed limits. We need to get out of London to go and actually have some fun. And probably, given it's not raining, we should pop the roof down shortly, but I think we'll go grab quick stack somewhere and then go check out what was at the Dorchester. Gold Smart with number plate that costs much more than smart. It's very quiet around today but at the Ferrari dealer what do we have? We've got a Roma and we've got an 812 GTS. I rather thought we might see some others about. Not at the moment. Oh oh I spoke too soon. 488 Spider. The guys from Centurion Key which is of course on the other side the Centurion shop and another G63. Yeah. Right around the corner, we have an Aventador. Mixture of gloss black and satin black. Oh, and an SBJ Roadster. <laughs> that was so London, I'm busy looking at one Aventador and there's another one right around the corner. I might park up for a second, actually. I had to swing back around and put the roof down for a quick photo because it is not every day you are sandwiched between two satin black Lamborghini Aventadors. That's the Aventador S Coupe and this is, of course, the ultimate menacing Batmobile, hence the number plate, the Bat, on the SVJ Roadster. All of the hardcore aero, the carbon roof panels, and the satin black paintwork to finish it off as well. That thing is seriously, seriously stealthy, and this is just so pretty. The glacial blue paint colour in the sunshine looks lovely, and it feels like a complete blast from the past to have it back on that plate as well. Roof down here in central London, car spotting and seeing many in Aventador as we go. Anyway, let's continue. We have a yellow 488 Spider. Yellow does work on Ferraris. Very nice. Anyway, I'm gonna head around this way. Oh, AMG GT Roadster. <laughs> Opposite that on the left, we have a Rolls Royce Phantom. Just London things, hey? We'll head around and go see if we can find what's lurking here and whether it's a Zonda or a Huayra or what exactly is about to be on our left. Oh, what else? We've got an F8 Tributo there as well. There's an F8 Tributo and then slightly further down was the Pagani. So where can I park? Go and have a look at that. 992 Turbo S Convertible with fastest on the plate. It is certainly one of the fastest cars on a drag strip. And down there in front of us there's a Mulsanne and a Continental GT on the left. Just London things. From one Aston to another, we've got a DB11, just there at the traffic light. New Phantom 8. That thing does look very grand. 
and Bentegas. There are lots of Bentegas around as well. And we've got a parking space, so we can actually get this parked up and go have a look around properly. Last. Oh, oh, 488 is coming back past. I think he's about to drive straight past us while I'm trying to work out how to get to this parking bay. This car's making some weird noises. I'm definitely going to have to have that looked at at some point. Well, it turns out I was wrong. That's not a Pagani. That is a LaFerrari, but I'm pretty sure it was under a Pagani car cover. But there is a Rosso Corsa LaFerrari in the lineup here. The 812 Superfast down at the end and the F8 Tributo up at this end and Rolls Royces and Range Rovers and the usual London things. But yeah, cool to see that. Rolls Royce Cullinan. That number plate is quite amusing as well. It's close to Cullinan, but not quite. Ferrari GTC for Lusso chasing a Bentayga um, behind the Mercedes estate. I need another Ferrari P12 back in my life. Not long. Down there, somewhere in the traffic, is a GT3 RS 4 litre going around the corner. That's very rare. Behind that bus is the whir of an Aventador SVJ. And that's not a standard exhaust either. That's from Qatar. Nice plane. Oh, cool. Purple and red logo. SVJ is followed by Norris. Perfect support car. That's definitely turning into the car of the day. Hello, Forest Haze Spider, round again. Off goes the F8. I do like those. The more I see the F8, the more I like it. Over there is a Honda NSX, which is very rare in the UK. You do not see many of those about. Well, look what is over there. The Pagani Huayra. So I think I did see a Pagani earlier. It was just undercover at the time. It's been out since. Huayra Roadster. How cool is that? Actually, really, really very cool. I suspect I've seen this one way back before. Let's just check it out. That's nice. Wow. One of the highlights of the day then. Huayra Roadster. That makes for quite the lineup, doesn't it? We're gonna have the Huayra alongside the LaFerrari. <laughs> cool. Over on that side is a Hurricane Performante Spider. Going up part lane. Oh, followed by a Performante Coupe and the F8 coming around that way. So we've got two Performantes up there. I hadn't even spotted the white one. Following, and then over on this side, we've got the Huayra parking up next to the LaFerrari. <laughs> How crazy is that? What a day. Two hypercars side by side in the lineup here at the Ballet. There's another Ferrari 812. So nice, I love them. Almost immediately after, both cars are going out. How often do you see Huayra Roadster and LaFerrari? Lamborghini Gallardo. Seen that many times over the years. <laughs> Love it. Aston Martin Vanquish S. That sounds so good. We're back in the car. We've got another DB11, another Lamborghini Urus. There are loads of those around. And this is going to be a squeeze. As you can possibly tell, it's actually been raining. Um, it was pouring down for a period. But thankfully, back to being dry again now and just basically out and about. And all of this has changed quite significantly in terms of layout since I used to drive around these roads. And it's really, really weird to be back in this car. I've got another Rolls Royce actually coming from the left here. Rolls Royces everywhere. So nice. One day I'd love to have a Rolls Royce for sure, but it's almost a case of just not doing it in a hurry, waiting for the right time to be able to do that, to be able to enjoy it. At the moment, just eyes peeled everywhere because you never know what's going to be around the next corner whether you know you go around here and there'll be a hypercar just parked up or something but i imagine with the rain it's going to have sent a few cars home so we'll see what comes out in a little bit amg gtr beast of the green hill also on a guitar plate i think bright yellow urus i guess we've seen quite a few uruses today as well i don't know why the guy behind is beeping it's literally a 20 mile an hour zone and we're going at 19 20 miles an hour <laughs> There's not much else I can do. Our DB11 Volante up there. Maserati, Bentley Mulsanne. Yeah, nice. Rolls Royce, Cullinan. No front plate, looks cool. Alfa Romeo 4C Spider. 
be honest, you don't see a lot of those around. Gambala GT550 Biturbo Exclusive KN. Wide body, red roof rails. I'm not quite sure what I think of that. Never really liked modified KNs to that extent. That's just, it's just too, oh, 812 up ahead. Can certainly hear it, certainly hear the V12. Talking of which, given that the sun is out, we should probably have this roof down now. Sun is back out, everything is dry. Green light up ahead, but you can drive while you're doing the roof in this car. It doesn't go mad at you. I don't actually know if you can still drive up to what speed. That squeak is getting a little bit worse as well, so I'm slightly concerned about this. I don't know why this car is squeaking. Roof movement complete. Now it's just lovely. Memories again of driving it around London, roof down. What's gonna be in the Lamborghini London showroom? Something undercover, a hurricane, a vent door. It's not a whole lot to see, and difficult to see as well with the bright sunshine. The British weather is officially all over the place. How do we go from now having this wonderful sunshine on us to pouring with rain less than an hour ago? Oh, Pista. Then we get to the main HRO in Ferrari London showroom, which is currently going through refurbishment works. What else do we have? F12 and another piece there. And that's all we can see today. They also have downstairs with used cars for sale and things. Not a whole lot we were able to see there. Right, I guess we're gonna turn around and go the other way. Let's go back past this. Is it a pista? Yes, it's a pista. Satin grey, satin silver. Navy blue stripes, that's quite nice. Right, another piece to spot it. Two interesting cars here. AMG GTS in solar beam. That's the color that I'm painting on my GT Black series. And then we've got the Beast of the Green Hell, the Saturn Green Hell Magno AMG GTR as well. So that's quite fun to see, especially to see solar beam and see it in the sunshine. You can see why that color with all of the exposed carbon, with the gloss black elements and with the aggression of the GT Black series is gonna look insane which is why I'm doing it. Yeah. First, I think, probably solar beam car I've seen since taking delivery of my GT Black Series, and it looked very nice. At the far left of the McLaren London showroom is a red Speedtail with a fade on it as well. There is a McLaren Speedtail tucked in the back there, in the dark, and there's a McLaren GT centre stage as well. Couldn't exactly see much of that, but there was a Speedtail there, I promise. Um, it feels like it's got really quiet, thanks to the weather. Loads of the usual AMGs. Oh, my back, very nice. V12, very, very, very lovely. Gran Turismo passing another DB11, and I tell you what, that Gran Turismo does sound very good. Also with a 4.7 litre V8, but one of the best sounding cars ever. And they are an absolute bargain as well. In front of us is a C Coupe, is it a C63? Can't tell from here, but it's also very, very sparkly. It's completely covered in crystals or something. Hopefully we can catch it and have a look. Performante Spider, and that is in Viola Pacife, which is one of the colours I considered for my STO. And the combination with the Italian flag stripes and the brake calipers is really good. Oh, there's an R8 as well. Um, but no, I considered the Viola Pacife for the STO before I went with Viola Bast, which is more like a magenta, more pinky. I'm looking forward to seeing what it actually looks like on a car. I don't think I've ever seen myself, other than photos, of course, a Viola Bast Lambo. So I'm very, very intrigued to see what that's like. Another Ferrari F8, F8 Tributo, satin black on that one. The sun is making this difficult, but we've got another satin black car. That is an AMG GTS, I guess. Now, if we're going for a real blast from the past, we're actually just approaching Parliament Square, past the Houses of Parliament here, which is completely being reconstructed at the moment, so covered in scaffolding. But my first ever video where I spoke to camera was sitting in this seat of this car on this bit of tarmac as we went on to Parliament Square and it started very awkwardly with Hi, I'm Tim or Shmi150 as you might know me on YouTube. Well, I had no idea what I was doing and I think it's safe to say that things have um, got a little better since. I hope you guys agree, but it is completely for me to be here with this car next to Big Ben in the centre of London, in Westminster, I never ever thought this might happen again. This is really strange. Now, it's all been completely changed since. 
they didn't have the traffic lights set up as they are now and you could actually at that time drive back in that direction which I think now is limited but yeah the clock actually struck as I was about here and it was hi I'm Tim or Shmi150 as you know me on YouTube and I'm driving in my Aston Martin V8 Vantage Roadster and um, here we are still driving in V8 Vantage Roadster more than 10 years on that was in July 2011 it is now August 2021 <laughs> how mad is that yeah here we are so good times what a way to I guess bring back some memories for me and I guess for some of you guys who've been around for the long haul as well and so thank you for being part of it all well I think it is time to head back towards home this has been quite as I said earlier the blast from the past reliving driving this car car spotting and seeing some pretty cool stuff as well the Huayra Roadster La Ferrari I think three SPJs maybe even a fourth and plenty of other supercars 812s pistas other Lamborghinis you name it a little bit of window shopping along the way as well and just enjoying being back in this car to be honest being back at the wheel of a car that until two or three months ago I never thought I might see again let alone having the collection let alone go car spotting with again after quite so long 11 years or so since I bought it for the first time nine years after I sold it and just still amazing to be at the wheel of it there are plenty of things about the car that need to be done up and made right and that will all come as part of the restoration to bring it back to former glory for now just driving using it living with it finding things for example even the upshift paddle just a little bit loose they shouldn't do that rattles around a little bit small things shouldn't be too complicated to get fixed I hope but that combined with some paint bits and pieces and obviously having it back on 87 TV that's the craziest thing the plate has returned I've always been well I have been wondering for quite a while what it might one day return on and I don't think there would have been a more fitting car than being back on the first Schmiebermobile back on the first car that we ever called the Schmiebermobile the second car that it was ever worn by but probably the most well easily the most significant connection for me for now though we'll make our way back it is a lovely afternoon here in London thank you very much for watching and thank you guys as always for your support it is really appreciated that's it for this time and I'll see you again very soon cheers <laughs>